I'm back at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery. In previous videos I visited the grave of Marilyn Monroe and Dean Martin. Today I'm going to visit a number of different graves here. Dominique Dunn, poltergeist actress who was murdered by her boyfriend, sorry her ex-boyfriend in 1982. She also acted in Chips and the mini-series V. Her breakthrough role was as Dana Freeling, the eldest daughter in the first Poltergeist film. Dominic Dunn was a very superstitious person. She loved animals and her home became an asylum for unwanted stray animals. She was in the early stages of filming for the miniseries V when she died. Only the back of her head can be seen in the first episode of the series. On October 30th, 1982, she was strangled by her ex-boyfriend John Thomas Sweeney on the driveway of her West Hollywood home. She initially survived the attack but fell into a coma before dying five days later on November 4th. Sweeney was only convicted of voluntary manslaughter and was released from prison after only serving three and a half years. She was 22 when she died. Well, this is a sad one. Heather O'Rourke. She was a child actress who starred in the three Poltergeist films. Born in San Diego in 1975, she was discovered by Steven Spielberg when she was five years old and he cast her as Carol Ann Freeling in The Poltergeist. She became famous for saying the line, they're here, and she actually beat Drew Barrymore to win her part in the film. But Drew Barrymore would go on to play Gertie in E.T. Heather O'Rourke also appeared in Happy Days. She was recast for Poltergeist 2 and 3. The latter would be released after her death. She died on February the 1st, 1988, at the age of 12. Louis Jordan, a French actor born in 1921. His first film was the Paradigm Case in 1974, a film that also starred Gregory Peck and was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. In 1983 he was a Bond villain in Octopussy and his last film was Year of the Comet in 1992. Pardon my French, the correct pronunciation of his name is Louis Jordan. He was part of the French resistance during World War II and he helped publish and distribute newspapers for the underground. And his father was actually the manager of the Cannes Grand Hotel during the war. In 2010 he received the French Legion of Honor, presented by the French ambassador to the US in Los Angeles. He died at his Beverly Hills home in February 2015 and he was 93. Grave of Farrah Fawcett, star of the TV series Charlie's Angels, which ran from 1976 till 1981. She also had a recurring role in The Six Million Dollar Man alongside her then husband Lee Majors. Her film appearances include Logan's Run in 1976 and The Cannonball Run in 1981. She was discovered by a Hollywood agent when she won a campus beauty contest at the University of Texas in Austin. Although she is best remembered for her part in Charlie's Angels, she actually left the show after the first season. This resulted in a lawsuit against her and she agreed to make guest appearances in the show. Her famous red bathing suit poster was the most popular poster ever sold. It sold over 12 million copies and is still selling to this day. She was actually the inspiration behind the song Midnight's Train to Georgia, when during a telephone conversation with Jim Weatherly, she mentioned that she was about to take the midnight plane to Houston. In 2005, she had her own reality show, Chasing Farah. The show followed her personal and professional life. She died of cancer on June 25th, 2009, at the age of 62. 
She was diagnosed with a disease in 2006 and underwent chemotherapy and surgery. She died on the same day as Michael Jackson. The singer and composer Mel Torm. He was nicknamed the Velvet Fog for his smooth, mellow tenor voice, but he hated this nickname. He composed the music and co-wrote the lyrics for the Christmas song. If you're not sure which song that is, it's the one with uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. The song was famously covered by Nat King Cole. He was also a film and TV actor from the 1940s onwards, and even appeared in the sitcom Seinfeld in 1988. He wrote several books, including a biography of Judy Garland. He died on June 5th, 1999, at the age of 73. Commission Grave of Janet Lee, actress. She had a long career as an actress, but her biggest success was in 1960 when she played the part of Marion Crane in Alfred Hitchcock's film Psycho. Referring to the famous shower scene, she said she was never able to take a shower again and always opted for a bath. She was married four times, most famously to actor Tony Curtis. One of her daughters is Jamie Lee Curtis. She appeared in all kinds of movies from dramas, musicals, westerns and comedies. She was nominated for an Academy Award for her parts in the film Psycho. She wrote four books, one of which was a non-fiction book about the film Psycho. One of her final film roles was alongside her daughter in Halloween H2O. Janet Lee died in 2004 at the age of 77. Right next to Janet Lee is the actor Jack Klugman, best known for playing Quincy in the TV series of the same name. The show ran from 1976 until 1983. Some of his film roles include 12 Angry Men, The Detective and Days of Wine and Roses. Klugman was born in Philadelphia in 1922. He served in the US Army during World War II. Before becoming a famous actor, he was once roommates with a then-unknown Charles Bronson in New York City. He appeared in many TV shows from the 1950s, including Studio One and Playhouse 90, but he is best remembered for his part as Quincy. Now, Klugman was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1974, but continued to work. After throat cancer surgery in 1988, he was left with a quiet, raspy voice. Klugman died of prostate cancer at his Los Angeles home on the 24th of December 2012. He was 90 years old. Natalie Wood started acting as a child, appeared in Miracle on 34th Street in 1947. When she was eight years old. She was nominated for an Academy Award for her performance as Judy in Ripple Without a Cause, starring alongside James Dean. She took time away from acting in the 1970s, only appearing in two films throughout the decade. She died in mysterious circumstances on November 29th, 1981. She died in November 1981 at the age of 43. She had been working on her comeback film Brainstorm. Her co-star Christopher Walken was invited to join Woods and her husband Robert Wagner on a yacht in the Pacific Ocean near Catalina Island in California. On the night of her death, Wagner claims they had an argument, after which he went to bed. He noticed she was missing at 1.30 in the morning. The boat Stingy was missing. A search revealed the body of Natalie Woods in the water, a mile away from the yacht. She was wearing a nightgown, jacket and socks. The coroner ruled her death as accidental drowning, the assumption being that she had taken the dinghy to travel to shore, following the argument with Wagner. However, there were bruises on her body, and it seems highly unlikely that she would have gone in the dinghy due to her fear of dark water. I've always been terrified, still I am. 
In 2012, the Los Angeles chief coroner changed the cause of death from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. On February the 1st, 2018, the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department named Wagner as a person of interest in the case. Wagner has denied any involvement in Natalie Wood's death.